You can max level guns in just two games using a strategy that I've been practicing and perfecting behind the scenes that I'm going to reveal to you guys today. I'm going to show you the exact loadout you need to be using and how to optimize your leveling speed throughout the process. And best of all, this is all done within Warzone. So free to play and no zombies or boring multiplayer shipment grinding. Now, this entire strategy revolves around completing as many contracts as possible within the plunder game mode. And if you've already heard of the plunder leveling strategies from other people, do not click off this video because the stuff I'm going to cover today goes way more in depth than any video that I've seen so far and takes the leveling speed to a completely new level. So let's start off by looking at our loadout in the pre-game. I've got a leveling class set up here. Of course, the obvious thing to start off with is the gun that you want to level. An example here is this AMR9. I've got it level three. I've barely touched it. You just want to put it as your main gun so that it's ready every time you respawn inside of Plunder to level up. For your secondary, I'd recommend you run the Karambit knife. You might need to unlock this in the armory if you haven't done so already. But the reasoning for this is that this is the melee weapon that gives you the fastest movement speed in the game. For what we're trying to do in terms of just running away and focusing purely on contracts, movement speed and escaping are the key. So the Karambit is really, really good for that. For our tactical and lethal tactical, I went with smoke grenade. Smoke grenade is the perfect way to get away from people who are potentially trying to hunt you down in the game if you've got some annoying rats who just won't leave you alone. Then for lethal, there wasn't really anything in here which I was too fond of. You could run something like claymores or prox mines and just leave them behind you when you're running away. Once again, focusing on trying to just escape from everyone. Uh, but I do also like thermites because you can use these both aggressively and defensively. You can throw them towards someone or you can throw them in a doorway behind you to halt off someone who's chasing from behind. So one of those three is going to be pretty good. And then probably the most important part of the loadout, the perk package. So I've decided to go with these four perks. Let me explain why. First up, double time in slot one. Makes perfect sense. Increases your attack sprint duration and reduces the refresh time. So overall, it's going to allow us to just get around the map a lot quicker while we're trying to complete our contracts. Really, really important we have that on. For the second perk, you could go between Battle Hardened and EOD. I've gone for Battle Hardened purely because you do find a lot of people running those stun grenades, especially in Plunder. People just seem to chuck them at you constantly and having slightly reduced effects from those and being able to keep running away, I have found to be the best bet. Perk 3 is an incredibly important one that no one ever covers for this strategy. We're going to be running Payout. It's probably a perk you've never even seen before because why would you ever run this inside of BR? Well, for this strategy where we want to do a lot of contracts and ideally get a lot of money, as you will see in a bit, payout's great. It gives you more payout for every contract you do. I believe it's 10% more that you get for every contract. And then for perk four, you really can't go wrong with high alert. It's going to give you that safety net where if someone decides to start looking at you, you're going to know that they are and you can break line of sight, always have that knowledge of where people are around you. There's a reason everyone's running this in BR. It makes perfect sense to run it for this strategy as well. Now that we've got the perfectly crafted loadout for the strategy, you next want to make that loadout your favorite loadout, which you can do by right clicking it and clicking set as favorite. If you are playing on a controller, there'll be some way to do it. I don't know what that input is, but you'll see it will appear now as your first loadout in the list and it will make it so that when we jump into the game, this is the loadout you'll spawn in with by default, which is a really handy thing to just get ahead right from the start of the game. Next thing you need to do is turn squad fill off. If you have a load of other people in your squad, they're going to be running off to a completely different area of the map. They're going to be picking up contracts that you do not want to be doing. They're going to be ruining where you spawn on the map as well if you so happen to die. And I think your spawn time increases as well, so it just slows the whole process down. Make sure squad fills off. You're doing this either on your own or potentially with a little squad of people that you're playing in a party with who are trying to do the same thing as you. And one last thing. Yes, we are going to be using a double weapon XP token, but do not pop it before we start searching. There's some weird times where you'll have connecting bugs or it'll just take a bit of a long time to get into a game and you do not want to waste any of this crucial time. So just wait till you get in game and you can pop the token once you're actually in that pre-game part of the lobby. Now you can jump in game. So the first thing that's going to happen is you're going to drop into the warm-up routine part of the game. What you want to do is check that firstly, you're not in a laggy server because the servers have been pretty laggy recently. Then pop your double weapon XP token. And because we set our loadout as our favorite loadout, you will spawn in by default with it. And you can go around and start killing people to get that leveling grind started 
started as soon as possible. When the game begins and you're in the plane sequence, you've got a bit of time to open up the map and decide where you're going to go. You want to pick an area that is densely filled with most wanted and intel contracts. These are the best contracts that you're going to want to grind out for this strategy. I'll explain why these are better than all the other ones in just a sec. A massive recommendation for me is to fly away from the flight path as much as possible, but ideally aim for one of these three areas, the top left area of the map, the top middle area of the map, or the bottom left area of the map. The reason for picking between these three areas all comes down to the first contract we're going to be focusing on, Most Wanted. When you pick this contract up, you're going to get marked on the map for everyone around to see. So you do have a bit of target in your head and you have to survive until the timer runs out. But what's great is that every time you open up any loot caches, that timer reduces by 10 seconds extra. So when you've picked up the contract, your focus needs to be on opening as many loot caches as quickly as possible. And these can be anything from the loot boxes to the loot bags, as well as those medical cabinets that are in every single bathroom around the map. A little extra tip, try and make sure you've got your karambit out while you're running between loot cache locations. Just allows you to travel around a bit quicker, but make sure that you've got your gun out when you open up any chest. You do get a little bit of XP for this. So why did I recommend those three areas of the map, the top left, the bottom left, and the top mid? Well, first reason simply is that they are pretty fringe areas of the map. You're not going to get many people going to these places. Most people in Plunder are going to be landing downtown or sort of mid-map, low town, and just fighting each other constantly. But the second and probably even more important reason is there is so many more guaranteed loot cash spawns in the buildings in these areas. I mean, if you just look at this footage in the background, I am charging full speed, building to building, opening up three or four loot caches per room. And the more you do this strategy in these specific areas, you will learn where those guaranteed spawns are. You'll know that there's a cash register here, a loot bag can spawn here. You'll hear a chest that always spawns in a certain area of the building. It just makes the strategy so much more efficient the more you practice it. Whilst doing the most wanted, you could also get super lucky like we did here and have a restock event happen where all of the loot caches around you reset, which obviously means you can just run back through all the ones where you know exactly where they are and just do them again. You can just fly through these contracts. So focus on getting the contract done and make sure when that timer ticks over to zero, you have the gun you want to level in hand so that you get the weapon XP. When you complete the most wanted, a little bonus, a crate will fall basically directly on your head. Uh, it's a supply crate that gives you a ton of different stuff. The thing we care about is the money. So make sure you go and open that up and grab all the money from it. And then as soon as you've done that, no time to waste. You want to be ready to go and grab the next most wanted contract. Or if there aren't any of those around, the next best is the Intel contract. For these contracts, when you pick them up, it will mark an upload point on the map. You just need to go to that upload point activate it and then sit by it until the bar fills up. It does fire a flare into the sky so people might see you doing it. It's kind of similar to the most wanted where you can't really do it secretly but ideally there's not going to be anyone around you. Luckily in Plunder these Intel contracts don't seem to send you too far away to get to that upload point and even better there are a ton of redeploy points. You can use these and fly straight over to the upload point and get the contract done as quick as possible. You can even actually chain together the redeploys, so the couple of seconds you spend going up the first one, you don't need to do it again, you just spam the button to get on the next one as you fly past it, and you'll essentially frog leap off each one, completing these contracts really, really quickly. Now, before we move on, if you are finding this video to be useful, informative, you like the style, and you want to see more of this kind of thing from me moving forward, then please do consider subscribing down below. Literally takes one click, no effort on your guys' part, and it means the absolute world to me. I'm going to be releasing a ton of content for Warzone moving forward, so you definitely don't want to miss it. Subscribe down below. Now, at this point, we're feeling great. We're completing contracts really quickly. That weapon XP is just rolling in but unfortunately, we're also going to be carrying a ton of cash, especially because we've got that payout perk on. And you might think, well, why is that a bad thing? Money's good. We're playing plunder. Well, if you're carrying a load of money in plunder, you could be marked as a high earner, which marks you on the map for everyone to see. And people do tend to chase down high earners for all of their cash. So the priority at this point is to get rid of that money, or I guess I should say, spend that money as wisely as possible. Luckily, what we're gonna do with that money next will also pile up a ton of weapon XP. So as fast as possible, what you wanna do is get to the nearest buy station. When you get there, make sure the gun you wanna level is in hand. 
open it up and head to the sell menu. Inside of here, you can sell any valuables you found, things like GPUs or laptops or things like that. Then you need to head over to the gear menu and the first thing you need to buy is a credit card. This is an insanely powerful item for this strategy because it lowers the price of everything on the menu for the entire game. It's permanent, you don't lose it on death, so you just buy it once and you don't have to think about it for the rest of the game. And the final thing you wanna do at the buy station is buy plates, as many as possible. Literally spam the button as quick as you can and you'll find that you are getting weapon XP every single plate you buy and it's quite a sizable amount when it all adds up. Hold your horses though, the next thing I'd recommend you do is open up your backpack and drop a ton of the plates that you just bought. These are gonna be just filling up your backpack, it's gonna mean you can't pick up any more valuables later on, so make sure you do that first. Then you just wanna rinse and repeat, go and complete contracts, get weapon XP and money for completing them as quick as possible, then go to the buy stations and buy more plates over and over and over again. A little extra tip regarding completing contracts and spam buying those plates is to always keep an eye on how close any teams in the game are to pushing the game into overtime. You can do this pretty simply by looking at the bar in the bottom left. The red bar is the team that is in first in the game and you can see how close that bar is to being filled up which means they are close to hitting a million dollars. When the overtime begins I believe the XP actually doubles so if you're just about to go and spam buy plates or complete a a contract and you see that you're really close to overtime starting, it might be best to just wait because you're then going to get way more XP once it starts. It's a pretty unlikely timing, but I have had it happen a couple of times and it's a good little trick to have up your sleeve. Now I am not done yet. There is more to this strategy. Later on in the game, keep an eye on the map for any money crates or abandoned supply caches that happen to be on your way to potentially finishing contracts. Money crates are pretty self-explanatory. When you open them, you're going to get a ton of cash and abandoned supply caches are buildings which will contain a special chest inside which contains a ton of money and valuables to sell. Of course, all of this adds up to even more money to spend on plates and they take very little time to go and do. Now, obviously we focused on most wanted and intel contracts and I've completely avoided scavengers and bounties. The reasoning for this, scavengers, they can be pretty good. You can complete them sometimes pretty quick, but they do tend to send you on a bit of a wild goose chase. And the worst thing is you can get really unlucky and have one of your scavenger crates spawn inside of a locked black site building, which I had happen here. And then it's obvious why we avoid bounties. We do not want to interact with enemies. Even if we think we might be better than them, we might be sent really far away to go chase some dude driving a car away from you while he's got his bounty on him. And when you do catch up with him, you've got a level one or three weapon in your hand and they've got their fully leveled LMG or broken marks and rifle or sniper. It just isn't a fair fight. It's a waste of time. Stick to the most wanted and the intels. And the last big thing I've not even touched on yet is doing this whole thing with a squad. Whether that be one, two, or three extra people that you're doing this in a pre-made party with, it completely revolutionizes and speeds the process up. The most wanted contracts will reduce in time for every cache that anyone on your team opens. So you can literally split up into four separate areas with all of their own guaranteed loot cache spawns and you fly through that contract. And then for the Intel contracts, one person can go and pick up the contract while the rest of the team wait by a redeploy. And then as soon as it reveals where the upload point is, they go up the redeploy, they all fly over there and they complete that contract as quick as possible. And after you've completed an ungodly amount of contracts in a very short amount of time, you can all run over to the buy station, buy yourself a credit card and buy more plates than a Michelin star restaurant. In just two or maybe three games, if one doesn't go as smoothly, you should have your gun at a nice max level ready to build for proper BR. And now that you've got this weapon leveling strategy nailed down, you need to go and watch this video next where I'll take you through six incredibly powerful Warzone settings that you will regret if you do not change.